Hello, my name is Lars Tredengel and I am the tier, one of the Tier 3 engineers for the Type International PPC-1 undersea cable system that's running from Sydney, Australia to Guam, USA. Uh, for those of you that are curious what, where Guam is, uh, Guam is a U.S. territory. We're about 13 degrees north of the equator and about 1,800 kilometers straight east of the Philippines in, a, in an island chain named, uh, known as the Marianas Island Chain. Uh, for those of you interested, you can look it up on a map. It's very, very easy to find, and it can give you an idea of the distance that this cable is running. Today, I want to talk to you about our PFE. Our PFE is basically made up of, uh, of, of four parts, and the, what, what we have here in Guam, and which will be the same thing in Sydney, is what we call a high-voltage PFE. Uh, this PFE has the capability of putting out 12,500 volts with a constant current of 1.6 amps. Now, the major components on this system are what we, the PLIMB bay, which we call a twin bay, our converter control bays, our converter bays, which basically are our converters, our plant monitor bays, and our test load bay. The PLIMB the bay is, this is actually an optional accessory that we use, the, that we put in, usually when we have a long distance uh, or we have some kind of electrical interference along the route that our land route cable takes before it goes into the ocean. Uh, in this case, our, from the cable station here to the beach mantle is approximately eight kilometers. So what this thin bay does in a, in a basic sense is it stabilizes the power signal as it traverses this route. So that what, the nice, good, clean power signal that we have coming here from the station is good and it stays clean for that entire route as it hits the beach mantle and goes out into the ocean, goes to the first repeater. Obviously, this is a, a, a big concern for us because the repeaters are very, very expensive. And once they're in the ocean, if they go bad and you have to pull them up, it costs a lot of money. Uh, the next section of our PFB are our converter control bay and our converter bay. We have uh, two of these. We have control bay one, control bay two, converter bay one, and converter bay two. Uh, following that, as I mentioned, we have our plant monitor bay and we have our test load bay. So basically, what we do whenever we have power up these PFEs is, well, we don't have to really power them up. What we do is we power them on and then we ramp up. They'll ramp up the PFE to the table. Uh, as you can see right now, we have paper here. We're not allowed to power on the PFEs, so I could actually show you. Um, the reason we, this paper, we have this paper here is do not power the PFE. It's because we have people working on the cables down in the beach manhole, beach manhole right now. Uh, obviously, it's very, very dangerous with the amount of current and voltage that's output by one of these systems to power on anything. Uh, it, you, can, you can kill somebody very, very easily. Uh, safety is a very, very high concern for us. And anytime anyone's working on the cable, the PFE stays powered off. However, in a normal situation, when we're going to power up the cable, what we'll do, well, let me explain this base, this base first. What we have here is we have a touch screen. And this is control bay one, and in the bottom of control bay one, we have what's called a high voltage plant module. This, uh, uh, this control bay is plant A. This over here on control bay two, down here, is plant B. Our normal configuration that we run is plant A on cable, plant B on test load. The reason that we do this is because if we have a faulty converter somewhere, uh, as I said, we have multiple converters in here. And let's say we have a, a converter go bad, we can take down this converter bay. And we can pull that converter, we can put a new one in. Uh, over here, as we've taken this down and we take down this, we can, we can switch this over to plant B. Then we can we, we can wrap this this converter this converter bay back up and this you know via this control bay we can ramp it back up to plant B which is over here plant B is on test load and this gives us the ability to actually test our converters and run them for a period of time and let them heat you know heat soak in 24 hours to make sure that there's no more problems before we actually want to power it back on the cable so that's that's one of the that's the biggest reason why we won't run one plant on cable, one plant on test load. 
So normal configuration for us is plant A on table, plant B on test load. So what we do is we come over here and we come into this touch screen and we have our information that we will determine during our commissioning phase, which has yet to occur. And we'll put in what we want to set as our ramp up current and our ramp up voltage. In addition to that, we'll set what we'll call our shutdown limits. Uh, our high voltage shutdown, our high current shutdown, low voltage shutdown, low current shutdown, and then from that point we'll do that over here as well. Once we've completed that, we'll do, we got a little button here that says uh, ramp. We'll hit that button two times, hit that button two times here, and the PFT will start ramping up. Uh, it's, a, it's a slow process, uh, as you know, the, the cable is very, very long. It can take 10 to 15 minutes for these converters to ramp up to what the numbers are that we specified here. Once that happens, then what the normal mode we run in is called current regulation mode. So once this current gets up to where it's supposed to be, and the voltage gets up to where it's supposed to be, then we come over here to the mod plant monitor bay, and this is where we actually really pay attention. If we want to know what we're putting out on the plant, which is the undersea plant. Now, what we do when we power ramp up these PFEs is we ramp them up in Sydney and we ramp up Guam. We ramp them up at the same time. Okay? And when we do this, our idea is to balance the power or balance the load that's being put out onto the segment. So when I'm ramp finished ramping up, uh, let's say, well, I don't know what our voltage would be yet, but let's say it would be 10,000 volts and we'll have it at 0 0.80 amps, okay, for the current. So my current should say 0 0.80 and the current in Sydney should say 0 0.80. And since we want 10,000 volts, we want to we balance that to where uh, 10,000 volts total across the, the, the segment. We want to share that. So we want to be at 5,000 volts here and they want to be at 5,000 volts. So what we do is we might have to tweak this a little bit by increasing current here or there or decreasing current. And then we watch this plant voltage move up and down until we get it to within 50 to 100 volts. This is what's then known as a balanced segment where we have, are now in conjunction with the Sydney PFE sharing the load of the segment. This is very important for us. And the reason is, is because at any time, the PFP here or the PFP in Sydney, which this doesn't happen, it, it's very, very seldom does this ever happen. For some reason, a PFP shuts down. So let's say the, 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 the Sydney PFP, for some reason, does a complete shutdown. This PFP here in Guam, being at 5,000 volts, will then increase its output and it will increase the output to 10,000 volts. Thus, we're single end feeding the entire segment with this one PFP. So we have that built-in redundancy to where either PFE can power the entire segment. In addition to that, we also have redundancies built in locally. So let's say I'm single end feeding because Sydney went down, and then for some other catastrophic reason, which I've never heard of this happening, but it could. Let's say my converter bay two goes down, and the only thing left that I have is converter bay one. My converter bay one still has the output capacity to power the entire segment from Guam to Sydney. So not only do we have the double capacity of, of PFP at each end, but we actually have quadruple redundancies built in in order to keep this system powered up. Uh, I hope you found this, uh, I know this was a very brief lecture, I didn't go into a lot of detail about what goes on inside the PFP. There's a lot of information that our manufacturers don't want us to share publicly but I wanted to give you an idea of how the things work and what the PFP does and what it is and what we do with it when we're powering a segment and how it's used to power the segment. Uh, I hope you find this interesting and thank you very much for your time.